Hello Lava friends, I'm sure you have already heard of macros in Lava and probably have already used them. But what about response macros? You're not sure? Follow me. So we do have here a very tiny mini little API. We are here inside the api.route file and I have here my podcast and users that I'd like to share with the world. Let's take a look at one of the controllers here. It's very simple, we're just returning here all the podcasts, everything there is. And yeah, this works. Let's take a look at a request here, get podcast here. I can do this here directly in PHP Storm. Make a get request to this URL. Let's run this and we can see it was okay. We get our podcasts back. So this is working. Of course, this is now a very simple way to do this here just by returning everything here from my models, but this is being transferred to JSON. That's why it works. And the same basically we have here for our users. We're just returning all the users. And if we test this out, I have here another request in PHP Storm. Let's see what we get back. 200 response, okay, and we get back to users me and Mohammed. All right, so this is working. But now let's say we want to improve this a little bit and let's say we're not just returning here. All the users may want to be here a little bit more specific. So let's use here the response facade, which we have here, we want to return JSON. And let's say what we want to return here. Let's bring this up here. So this will be data. And then also, let's change this here. And here we will have a status. And let's just say this is success. All right. Clear this out, close this, reformat this. All right, let's try to run this now again for our users. Let's see, this is still working. We now have a status inside our response and we have a data. So this is a kind of typical format for an API. Again, very simple one, but this works. But now, of course, we want to do maybe the same now for our podcast controller here. All right, so let's maybe copy this here because we want to provide the same format, um, which would be nice. And here, we're returning all of my podcasts. All right, let's check out podcasts. Does this also work? Yes, it does. We have here success and we have the data. So this seems to be working nicely. But of course, you can imagine that this becomes a little bit cumbersome if you have to do this all the time for all the endpoints. Remember, oh, what did I provide? Was it called status? And the other thing, was it called data or something else? Or do we have account in there? and so on. And this is where response macros come in. Level macros allow you to extend core functionalities and create custom methods for classes like eloquent models, collections, or like in our case for responses. So let's take a look. Typically, you're going to do this inside a service provider where you're going to use a macro. And in our case, again, we're creating a response macro. So on the facade, which we have here and there is this macro method. And the one that we want to create now, let's call this API. And what we're going to get here from the outset will be the data. And then inside here, we are similar as to before, still use the response AP uh, facade. And then let's use JSON to return. Again, exactly the same as we did before. And then we have status here. Let's say this is just for a success message. And then we have data here. And now we are going to provide here the data that we're receiving here with this method. All right, let's take a look now. Let's try this now for our podcast here. So instead of using JSON, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call API. But before, let me generate my helper code here with the Laravel idea plugin, because I believe we have now autocomplete. Yes, we have. So API, and here we're just providing data. In this case, we are in the podcast controller, so all the podcasts like this. All right, let's take a look. Get podcasts here. Let's try this again. 200 response, success, data, this is working perfectly. And now we're going the same for our users. 
So here we're just using now this API method and we're providing the data which are our users. And we can get rid of this and let's try this out for our users here. Let's make a call again to this endpoint. And this is also working, very nice. And so now we have created a new macro that you can use very specifically for our need for our APIs. And of course you can um, go here wild and maybe instead of success, maybe you would use some kind of API status, which I have here success to make this a little bit more nicely to use. And then maybe you would like to add some count here as well, or maybe you're creating an um, API resource for your model. This works as well. But yeah, this is a nice example on how to use a macro in order to create a response that you're going to use on multiple situations in your application. But I got another example for you inside my context controller. So here we have a submit method. So this receives our submission here from our contact form. Here we would store it. And after that, what we're going to do is we are flashing out a thank you message like this. And this is a success message. And this, by the way, works with Chatstream and LiveWire. This is a specific banner that you can already show if you are using Chatstream. Okay, all right, now on our front end. And here in this contact form, let's try this out. My name is Christoph. My email is Christoph at laravel.com. And my message is just hi. So we're not doing anything with this message. But after sending this, we should see a message here. And we do. Thank you for your message. And we can click this away. Again, this is coming from LiveWire and we can reuse this, which is pretty nice. All right, so the two things we are doing down here is sending this flash message to the session and then we are returning back. And again, this is something that maybe you're going to use on multiple situations on your web application. So maybe it's a good idea to create a custom response that we can reuse. So back in our service provider, let's do the same now again as before. Response, and we're creating a new macro, and let's call it back with notification. Again, here we have a closure, and this receives now, maybe let's say it's just our message. And here again, we're doing the same as before, so let's just get this chunk here. Let's put this in here. Save this, and I'm going to rerun level idea to get auto completion for this new macro which we just created. And back here, again, we're going to use our response facade. And now back with notification. Here it is. And here we're just providing our message. Thank you for your submission maybe something like this and let's try it out again let's fill this out it's me it's my address hello let's send this and and here we have this message but this is wrong let's check again what's going on here and we're providing here this notification oh yeah i haven't replaced it here so let's do this really quickly message all right Let's refresh, try this again, test, 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 test. Here we are, thank you for your submissions and now this was working. So now we've created another macro for us to use back with notification, which we can now use in our contact controller. And I hope this gives you a good idea of what are the things that you could do with macros and in this case, especially with response macros because you're going to send out a ton of response in your application and yeah, try to make them as consistent as possible is always a good idea. Let me know if you have already used response macros in your application and please tell me about your use cases in the comments below. Have fun. Bye.